Right, take number 754 or something like that. My name is Jason and welcome to another true unboxing video here on BBR, where on camera I open up a box which hopefully contains a set of binoculars, I think in this case more than one set, um, for the very first time and give you my completely unfiltered, unbiased as always, uh, opinion on the product as I see it for the very first time. These videos tend to be somewhat waffling because they are completely unscripted and I'm, you know, fairly unprepared. So I'm not, um, so whilst I, I have an inkling of what's inside the box, you know, I haven't done a full research on the products yet. Okay, so um, this time, as you can see, we've got this giant box sent in to me all the way from Wyoming in the US and Maven Sport Optics out there. So thanks very much for that, guys. As you can see, there's a ton of stickers on the box. So it got bounced um, back and forth a few times here and there, and I ended up having to pay a lot of import duties and tax on this. So uh, I don't know the spat between the French and the American government going on at the moment, but I do know that you guys over there have to pay a lot more for your champagne, and it seems that I have to now pay a lot more to get um, binoculars into review for you guys. Anyway, uh, yeah, so as I said, this is already waffling, but I do have an inkling of what's inside, so let's just quickly go over that. Uh, Maven have recently brought out two new really exciting uh, ranges. Uh, an update on the B1 series this is a B1.2 binocular available in either a 8x42 or a 10x42 configuration. I do believe that uh, Maven has sent me the 10x42, so that's excellent. And, and then on top of that, um, the, the, so just to mention that that series is an update on the on the B1 series and it has a whole bunch of improvements um, on the coatings, uh, the prisms, and a bunch of other stuff I'll go to uh, as I unbox it the products. And on top of that, there's the B6 series, so I do believe, um, which is based on the B1.2 in, in terms of the optics, apart from the fact that they have larger 50 millimeter lenses. Here they are available in a 10 by 50 or a 12 by 50, I, I think. Um, I'm not sure which one may have been a cent. I think the 12 by 50, I'm hoping the 12 by 50. Um, which obviously leans towards more uh, those who are wanting uh, to maintain a good low light performance, but with a, a improved reach. So, you know, improved viewing distance or detail um, at distance. So without further ado, no more waffling, I promise. Well, no, I don't promise that. Anyway, so without further ado, let's get on with the show. <laughs> Okay, so let's just start off with some of the extras, sort of things they've sent me. Um, I don't know, as most of you might or might not know, as well as the optics, Maven make a whole bunch of uh, accessories and things like that. And as well as this includes um, some really nice t-shirts. Well, t-shirts, it looks really nice. Um, one thing I'll point out here quickly, it's in my size, so that's awesome. Uh, uh, it looks like it. Oh yeah, look at that for a nice t-shirt. Now, usually, I would give this away as a prize, but as it's in my size, I'm tempted to keep it for myself. I don't know. What do you guys think? Leave me a comment down below whether you think I should offer it up as a prize, um, size medium t-shirt from Maven, um, or should I wear it, keep it and wear it for myself? You know, if you come up with something witty or something clever, or I don't know, something interesting, perhaps I will send this on to you. Um, likewise with the cap, um, as with many of the manufacturers now get, are getting to understand and realize that I love my caps. Um, I've got a, quite a nice little collection going, but once again, I, I, you know, I sometimes offer, when I'm feeling generous, them offer as a prize. I, uh, so once again, if, if you'd like to have a Maven cap, you know, this will probably be one size fits all. It looks like it's a, a limited edition one. I don't know whose signature that is. I'll look it up and put it in the description. But um, if you think I should offer this up a prize, please um, do leave a comment or something um, as to a nice reason why you think I should take the time to send this to you and not keep it for myself. Really nice cap from Maven. Thanks very much, guys. Okay. So then before we get onto the binoculars, let's just quickly look, because this is something I did um, ask Maven to send me, is I do know that they make also lens cleaning kits, which are, they look to me to be of very high quality. So um, I already have, and linked down in the description, a guide to how to properly look after and clean um, your, your optics on, on binoculars. But I thought I wanted to update that and use um, some, a lens cleaning kit that I don't currently have or have ever used. So I won't open this um, package up now. 
um, just because I'm actually going to make a, a full review of this and do, uh, as I say, update my um, article and video on how to properly look after and clean your, your optics. So look out for that in the future. And I'll obviously be using this lens cleaning kit um, as the demonstration and review it at the same time. So that'll be coming soon. Okay, so the two binoculars. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of want to make sure that I, I, as I said, I think this is uh, the B1 and the B6. Um, I want to do the, I mean, the B1.2. I would love to do the B1.2 first, just because the B6 is based on that, so it just makes sense. The boxes are the same size, and just judging by the weight, I'm thinking this is the 42 millimeter uh, B1.2. So in the in the packets came a, a really nice Maven Optics sticker and another extra thing. So thanks very much. I'm not sure if everyone gets one or is just because I'm special. I don't know. Um, leave you know a comment on the in in below if you. If you know if you got one, if, if you have a, a, a nice new shiny Maven binocular, um, it would be good to know. Or is it just because I'm super special? <laughs> so there you go, a nice Maven optics sticker. And on top of that, Maven have also included a lens cleaning uh, cloth, and it also came with the other box. Now, usually, um, from experience, Maven um, package the binocular in a, a carry um, cloth, which doubles up as a cleaning cloth. Now this works quite well, but um, as I'll explain when I do my lens cleaning um, video, um, it's great for fine for cleaning the body, but for the lenses it can, you know, it's, it's somewhat dubious in that if you don't keep the cloth completely free of any debris, you could end up scratching the lenses. So it's really nice to see that Maven have also included what looks like to me to be a very good quality lens cleaning cloth. It's not generic, as you can see, it's got the Maven logo nicely stamped on it. Um, and I'm not going to open it up now because it's totally sealed and I think I need a pair of scissors. But um, look out for the review, but it, to me it looks like to be a, a good quality lens cleaning cloth. Right, so quickly onto the packaging. Um, it looks unique, it looks a bit like an egg box, <laughs> that's what it reminds me of. Now with, with a sleeve on it. Um, and I do sort of dwell on packaging a bit just because I do come from a packaging background, I used to be a designer. Um, and I used to make packaging for products. So it's something that sort of interests me. Um, with the way the world's going and you know ecologically friendly stuff, um, it does look like this is all recyclable and stuff like that, which is all very good. And as we're all in the, the nature business, um, it's obviously important for us to look after nature and the planet. So I'm liking that. Um, it's, it's distinctive and once again, Maven, all this stuff looks really nice. So yes, this is a, a very original looking box. Um, and I, first for me, oh, look at that. So there we go, inside, it's another lens cleaning cloth, I don't know, oh, just a card. Oh, so it's, this is the, oh, so this is the instruction manual. Excellent, so um, very well presented. It has its own um, envelope, so that's, that's pretty cool and, and unique. What I'll also quickly mention about this, uh, in these instructions. There's some details on the unconditional lifetime warranty. Um, I won't read all through that now, but that's obviously, uh, you know, as, as much as you would like, you know, based on terms and conditions, obviously. But um, it's all in one language, all in English. So it looks to be reasonably comprehensive in that it's going to show you cleaning, um, using your binocular with a tripod, which could be important, um, adding the straps, Here's the most important one for many people don't read that. Read on your diopter. I've got a guide to how to properly set up your diopter just so that you get the uh, view perfectly sharp for your particular vision, you know, if your left and right eyes are slightly different. Okay, so a good quality or a fairly comprehensive instruction manual. So that's good to see. Often they're um, written in a hundred languages and, you know, can turn one page. So that's nice to see that it may even have gone a bit further there. Right, ta-da! <laughs> Let's open it up. Okay. So as I say, the packaging is really unique. Um, I do like the way that with this egg box type construction, it um, obviously offers a really good level of protection um, during transportation. And I say, for me, it's come all the way from the States, so I'm trusting that's all good inside. You know, I think, it, it, just quickly to mention here, as once again, uh, Maven have... They don't use a um, soft carry case, as in a, a more rigid design, um, like most binocular or most manufacturers use. Rather, it just comes in this 
um, sort of carry bag. Uh, so I think it's important for that they, obviously their box um, offers a good level of protection, which they have, have done. Um, having a bag instead of a, a carry case, you know, some people may look at it as being a, a negative thing, and that's fine because, you know, if, if a carry case is important to you, um, obviously not having one included um, is something to think about. Uh, but for many people, this, this won't really be that much of an issue. Um, if it is an issue, you can actually go and buy one from Avon. They sell it as an extra. But um, if it's uh, for many people, um, myself included, I would just keep it at home um, in, its, in its carry bag like this. And if you carried it out in your car or whatever, and then when you, you use the binocular, you take it out of here and you're, you're good to go. So for me, it's not a massive um, issue. And I think one of the reasons that Maven do this is because many people will, um, who are using their products will also have a, um, use it as, I, I have a harness. And quite a lot of harnesses these days are the encased covered ones. And therefore, um, you know, having a case and the harness is just, you know, um, you know, just too much stuff. Obviously, um, it's another way for them to keep the price down and it's is why they have their optics are extremely high quality but at, at a very very um, competitive price compared to much of their competition and obviously to do this they have to have to make some sacrifices along the way and not including a carry case is one of them so whether or not this is important to use is something to understand about maven products um, and judge for yourself right okay so oh, under the binoculars we've got obviously the next strap now my experience of Maven neck straps has always been very good and this one looks to be no different in that firstly you can see it's not a generic strap made for every single cheap binocular out there so it's it's branded with the Maven logo nicely it has um, very nicely thickly padded so plenty of comfort there I also like the, the fact that it's slightly curved so that it should fit around your neck and shoulders just a little bit better than if it was absolutely straight um, on the underside is a smooth material, which quite often um, companies will use uh, like a neoprene rubberized material, which is nice in that it adds just a little bit of, uh, it prevents it from slipping about left to right, um, whereas it's not the case on this. So that's just sort of one thing that's slightly missing. But apart from that, I really do like the straps, look really well made. And one of the most important things is it's got a quick release clip, um, which many manufacturers forget. Well, it's not really forget, but it's this is a nice addition in the fact that you can take out um, the neck strap um, very easily without having to unthread it from the binocular all the time, um, which is just a convenience, makes it quick. But on top of that, if you're using your binocular with a harness, um, sometimes or all that, it's quite easy to swap out your neck strap, add it to the harness if you wish, especially if you get a harness that has a, a clip like this, it would work perfectly. Um, so making uh, swapping to and fro really quick and easy. So a really nice net strap. Um, another quick thing here is I do like the connector here. So when, when your binocular sits on your shoulders, for instance, this, well, it's not quite as good as sometimes, um, what's nice here is if it's a perfectly circular ring, it moves very, very easily. Just so, it, and it, I know it's a very small thing, but these little things do add up to make um, something that is, is ordinary to want something that's extraordinary. It just makes it, um, you know, as you bring the binocular up to your face, um, there's just a little bit more freedom of movement and so that the whole neck strap doesn't actually move and crumple on your neck. So whilst these, um, it does work quite well, it would have been a little bit better had that been a, a circular ring. But even so, it's better than the ones that are just sewn straight onto the neck strap. So yeah, as you can see, it's obviously you can adjust the length, all good. So a really nice neck strap, as usual from Maven. Right, so let's get into the binocular. Hopefully this is the B1.2. Let's have a quick look. Oh, my first impression is it's very compact. <laughs> so it's definitely not a 50 millimeter binocular. Right, so there you go, yeah. So it's the Maven uh, B1.2 10 by 42 binocular. Uh, so my first, very, very first impression is it is very, very compact. I mean, not very compact. For a 42 millimeter binocular, it's it's compact. So uh, in that it's relatively short for sure, um, which is I think is one of the things that Maven were trying to achieve when updating from the B1 series. 
um, in that they wanted a binocular that still had um, reasonably large 42 millimeter lenses, but something that was really easy to carry when out in the field. And this is definitely, at the moment, um, from first impressions, ticking those boxes. I, I really do like its short, compact shape. Um, I like the single bridge design, which is sort of, as you can see, um, I'm trying to get this, yeah, some focus, sort of uh, closer to the eyepieces than the ends of the barrel. So even though it's not a true open bridge design, um, there's plenty of you know, wiggle room here to hold onto the binocular. If, like me, you quite often don't use any sort of strap at all and you just carry the binoculars, really nice and comfortable to do so like this. <clears throat> Speaking of comfort and sort of carrying it, one thing that's noticeable really is the, the outer rubber armor that Maven uses is, has a very unique texture and feel to it. Um, it's very smooth and, and satin-like, so you would think it would be um, very you know, slippy and, and not offer a lot of grip, but it has a very, very fine texture. I don't know if we, let's try and get it focused on there, um, on it. So it, it, it's very grippy. I mean, it's, I think it's gonna, for me, unfortunately, gather dust quite easily. Um, so for making photographs, it's not ideal but it, it, it really does look nice. Another um, sort of thing that you know a lot of people don't think about, having a, a text a finish like this, I don't know if you can see, it doesn't reflect as much light as if it, what if it was just smooth, completely smooth, which, you know, again, is an extremely minor point. But if you want to remain hidden, um, and it's, it's important to have things that don't reflect, uh, likewise not make noise. So, you know, quite often people wonder why you need any sort of rubber armoring. But you know, if you've got a, a ring or something, you know, a wedding ring and you, you bang it against a hard metal, it can make a noise, which will give away your location. Okay, so um, that's definitely a Maven binocular. I really do like the looks of them. I mean, I, I know I'm slightly biased in the fact that they use orange and, and their gray color, which sort of matches the BBR logo as well. But it, it does look really nice. It's a really good looking binocular as usual. I like the fact that um, as you can see, Maven use a lot of metal parts on their binoculars. It does add to the weight, but it does feel like it's a, a quality product that you're holding. I mean, for instance, look at just the logo on the side there, you know. Many manufacturers will just, you know, either not have anything or, you know, just a bit of plastic. But that's all made from metal. Really, really nice quality. The focus wheels on Maven binoculars are outstanding. Um, and this one, I can already feel is no different. Really, really smooth, as you can feel. All metal. Okay, and I'm going sort of against what I said in regards to the um, not making noise when you're out in the field. As you can see, if you bang that, it would make you give you away, you know, very easily. So I guess it's something you have to be careful with if it's important. But at the same time, it's a beautiful focus wheel. I mean, you couldn't ask for more grip. So in all use, that won't mean anything to most people. But if in winter you've got thick gloves, you know, having something that turns easily, not, uh, is really easy to turn and lots of grip can make a difference. And it does make a difference, to be honest. So really nice focus wheel. As usual, it's the same design as used on pretty much all of the binoculars that I've tested of theirs in the past. And I'm glad they haven't changed anything there. Um, yes, as you can see, the binocular is tripod adaptable. Um, meaning that you can unscrew this and screw in a tripod adapter very easily, which you would expect. Okay, so what's next to look at quickly? Um, let's have a look at the, the eye cups. Very nice. Um, I think, if I'm not up, I'm incorrect in saying, this being the 10.42, I just to remind myself, um, it has more eye relief than the, um, the, the original B1 series. I think it's about 17 millimeters, which is excellent. Now, um, once again, for many people, this may or may not be any of any consequence whatsoever, but should you wear glasses or some sort of eye protection, you know, perhaps if you're a, a shooter at the range, um, being able to wear glasses, so you would have them at set, either at its minimum setting or somewhere in between, um, and still use the binoculars and still get the full field of view is really important. So it's nice to see that even with a 10 by 42, you get plenty of eye relief on these Maven binoculars, which is, is, is really important. Okay, um, speaking of which, the eye cups, as you can see, I really do, oh, they've got, so we go from the minimum setting, one, two, and uh, three. So they have two intermediate, which is excellent. So usually you either have zero or one. So having two intermediate gives you just 
an added level of flexibility when it comes to choosing the right level of eyepiece for your particular needs and use is excellent. And you know, the shape of your face or whatever. Um, I like the way that it clicks into each of the the click stops nice and you know uh, you know it's it's obvious when it's in there. Um, it's not quite as um, secure as I've had in the past, you know, on some some models. But it, then again, it's not it's not you know I'm I'm being very picky here, you know it's it's not bad. And and if if you look, if I push, oh, there we go. If I push really securely against them it doesn't it doesn't wind down which sometimes is the case so you know that's that's important you can push them very firmly against your face without any issues there um, as you can see the housing once again is made of metal excellent um I'm just gonna, yeah so they do come away which once again um for cleaning it makes cleaning your optics much easier and you can also clean these separately and replace them if you need Cheaper binoculars, you won't be able to remove this um, eyepiece, eye cup. Um, now, why is this important? Well, um, like buttered toast, if you drop your binoculars, and don't drop your binoculars, that's just bad. Just don't do it. But if you do, invariably what happens is it lands like this. And if this is plastic, it breaks. Um, they break, um, especially on a heavier set uh, quality. So I'm really glad to see that Maven have gone with a metal um, eye, eye cup housing. Um, it's just stronger and longer lasting. And then I really am glad that you, even if you had an issue, you could replace this quite easily. So really, uh, for me, that's a definite indicator of quality and a good attention to detail shown by Maven. I love the these metal rings where you fit the neck strap into. Really nicely well designed and it just looks like a quality instrument. Okay, so we've done the focus wheel. We've got the diopter adjuster over here. Um, it's not not lockable, which is unfortunate, but you know, um, at this price range is, is um, it would be rare to find ones that are. I will say that I like the fact that the ring is nice and thin and it also has a lot of grip, but it's also quite tight. So it, it won't move too easily by accident. So once you've set up your diopter, um, again, there's a nice link in the description, but they also do include details in the, um, in the instructions on how to do it properly just so that you get the binocular set up perfectly for your particular vision. Um, once you've got it set up, you obviously want to keep it at your setting. So it's important that it stays where you want it to stay, unless you share your binocular with someone and that brings up a whole lot of other issues. Okay, so as far as I know, um, like all other Maven binoculars, these are use mostly Japanese components and they are assembled in the US, which is good because Japan's um, optics are second to none. Um, you know, there's a perhaps some German optics may argue the fact, but they do make excellent quality optics. So what else can we talk about before we move on to the other set? Um, the eye, eyepiece coverings, um, pretty standard. There's um, not much to talk about here apart from the fact that they fit very well onto the end of the, the objective lenses. So it won't come away by accident. I like the way they tethered, just so that when you open them and use them out in the field, they're they're easily to find and replace. You don't have to go looking in your bag for them. Yet at the same time, they're completely out the way. They use a lot thicker rubber than what I often see. That's the one thing I'll notice straight away. And, and that's good, especially here, because as you can see, this would be a part that would break quite easily and perish. So the fact that it's a thicker rubber, it seems a bit more robust than usual. Also, what's noticeable is the way it fits into the ends. I mean, it fits over them, but at the same time, it's also the way it's designed into the ends of the barrel. I don't know if you can see, let me get it focused, sorry. Um, it fits into the barrel there, so it has a very, actually an excellent fit. I'll, I'll update my first thoughts there. It has an excellent fit um, into the end of the barrel, so that's definitely not moving or coming away. Um, once again, this is obviously not a generic um, bit of plastic made in a, a giant Chinese factory somewhere. It's specifically made for these binoculars, which is nice to see. As you can see, Maven have a threaded over there. So you could, in theory, attach some sort of filters or, or things to your binoculars should you ever wish to or need to. I sort of never do that, so would expand too much of that. Right, okay, so first impressions are, are as, as I perhaps would have guessed anyway, were are very, very good. I love the way the logo, it's all metal. 
I love the focus wheel, um, but this is for me uh, just typical of a, of a Maven binocular. Um, the view in that we will get to later when I do the full review. But in terms of the actual feel and the, the look um, and the, the parts that we can see on the outside, I, I'm super impressed. Right, okay, so let's move on to the, the other model, which I'm assuming is the Maven B6. Um, once again, we have a, a sticker, even bigger this time. <laughs> it's what actually made me guess this was the B6, funny enough. Don't know if it had any bearing on that or if it's just random. And once again, I don't know if everyone gets one. Um, it was just me because I'm special. Another cleaning cloth, which I've already gone through, so I'm not going to repeat myself. And here we have, um, I think they've thrown in a, a really nice brochure, including all their stuff. Excellent. Okay, so the packaging, once again, is the same. I'm not going to dwell on it. Try and rush this through. I'm so, as I say, I'm, so, I'm really sorry that these videos are so raffly, um, I waffle and I digress quite a lot. But they're completely, as I say, unscripted. So that's obviously going to be the instruction manual, as we know, the box. And then once we go, look, as you can see, it's the exact same neck strap, so I won't repeat myself. Put that over there. So as I say, the um, look out for the full reviews. Obviously, I'm going to go into way more detail in regards to the optics, um, the quality of the view that I see, um, and compare them to other binoculars within their price range and, and um, same size and configuration and a whole bunch of other stuff. But um, for the moment, I'm just going to talk about the exterior um, uh, aspects to them and, and what sort of initially strikes me about them. So as you can see straight away, they look similar. Oh, that box is going to fall off. <laughs> um, but as you can see now, this is a 50 millimeter binocular. While it's not massively different in size, it is bigger, as you can see, um, a bit longer. In terms of weight, um, I can't feel a huge amount of difference. I mean, uh, I'm sort of going to lean towards this being a little bit heavier, just because I can perhaps psychologically know that it should be, but it doesn't feel massively different. So for all intents and purposes, we have pretty much the same binocular, um, apart from the body being slightly larger. As far as I know, they use the same optics as the B1. And once again, I will get into the, as I mentioned in the full review, go into way of deep, lots of detail in regards to the optics, the coatings and everything like that. Um, obviously these binoculars are fully multi-coated. They have um, roof prisms, have we got Schmidt Peak and roof prisms in there? Um, these are dielectrically coated, so that means an extremely high level of transmittance. I mean, the amount of light I'm going through the, the prism is as close to 100% as you can get with that design of roof prism. Um, on top of that, I know they're phase corrected, so that it corrects something known as phase shift. As the light passes through the prism, it steps out of phase, all the different wavelengths. So you put phase correcting um, coatings onto the prisms, which correct that. So as far as I know, the, the optics on these are, are you know really excellent, uh, top notch. Um, the so the 12, let's just build more specifically, the, as I say, these the eye cups, everything are the same as the B1. So I won't just go over everything. Focus wheel, as you expect, truly excellent. Honestly, if you haven't used a Maven focus wheel, you're missing out on something truly awesome in life. It's, for me, one of the best focus wheels out there on the market. Bar none. Um, you know, some other others get as good, but none, none better. Um, it's a thing of beauty. <laughs> um, okay, so... I dwell on that, but but what I'm trying to say was um, let's just focus on how the the 12 by 50 is is different to the the standard 42 millimeter options. So obviously with slightly larger objective lenses, um, it's got too much stuff here. You can see that they're slightly bigger. Um, it's it's able to collect more light, and so obviously this is aimed more at people wanting to sacrifice a little bit in terms of the size of the binocular. Um, to in return you're getting a, a better um, collection of light and therefore potentially a better low light performance. Now because this is the 12 by 50 model um, it gets more complicated but if this was the 12 by um, the 10 by 50 model um, it would be uh, definitely have a better specifically a low light performance over the 10 by 42. Um, obviously you pay for it in a little by having a slightly as I say bigger and heavier binocular. 
A 12 by 50 is going to be ideal for those wanting more image detail, um, so at distance, so you know perhaps a bit of further range, or to be able to get a bit more detail at closer ranges. Okay, so quickly, one thing I didn't mention um, when we looked at the the B1.2 was just to mention that whilst we mentioned the hinge, I like the way that it's placed slightly, you know, towards closer to the the top of the the eyepieces than the objective lenses. It gives you nice um, lots of room to hold onto the binocular, you know, when you you're walking about in the field. But also just to mention that the actual hinge itself, it's, it's thin, so obviously that's once again gives you plenty of space um, on the barrel to hold on to. But at the same time, it is really nice and sturdy. I mean, quite often on a cheaper binocular, this can be an issue. Here, um, even though it is thin, it feels obviously no movement, because if there was, that would be really bad. But at the same time, it opens and closes um, with a good level of resistance. I wouldn't, I'd say, um, let me just check this if it's the same on this one. Yeah, it's pretty much the same. So um, it's a little less than some, but at the same time, it's not, you know, it, there's nothing worse than a binocular when you do this and it flops open and closed because that will drive you crazy. So as you can see, you can set it to your, your setting to match your, your eyes, your IPD setting, and it, it will stay um, at that setting unless you, you know, you want to move it. So the actual bridge itself, um, it just needs to confirm, you know, I wouldn't expect anything different from a binocular at this, at this quality and this price range to be anything different. But it, it does have a really good bridge and it's, it's a sturdy, I mean, I, I'm not going to obviously bang it as hard as I can on the table to see if it goes out of alignment or anything like that. But it looks about as, as good as you could hope for. Right, okay, so I'm going to leave this unboxing video there for now. And as I said, I'm really sorry for rambling and digressing and all that stuff, but I did warn you guys. Um, and I have asked in the past if you want me to continue to doing unboxing videos, and everyone, it's generally a, a positive feedback I get, so I will continue to do them. Um, what I will do now is over the next few weeks, perhaps a month or so, I'm going to thoroughly test both of these binoculars, you know, um, fully research them, both here in the office and go and use them out in the field. And then I'll be able to write a comprehensive review on every single aspect of the binocular. You know, this was going to include um, the optics used, um, obviously how they perform um, in, t in terms of the optics and, you know, um, ergonomically. And just when I've had time to use them, um, a good amount of time to use them and indeed compare them to other binoculars of similar configuration, but also within similar price ranges. And indeed, actually, I'm going to compare them to some more expensive binoculars. Just because of the way that Maven um, sell directly, they tend to um, offer a really good performance to price ratio. And therefore, it's always interesting to compare, you know, what you get with your money with these compared to other um, brands out there. So yeah, I'm just going to leave it, as I said, for there for now. Um, also, as I said, if you if you think I should offer these up as prizes, do let me know. Um, I'm always interested to hear your comments, thoughts, opinions, and indeed your questions. Please feel free to use the, the section down below, and I'm doing do my really best to get back to you. It's getting a little bit more difficult now as um, this channel gets more and more uh, popular, which once again is thanks to you guys because um, and, and to help that happen even better, please do give me a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to the channel. Um, if you do, you will be notified, um, especially if you do that little bell thing or something like that, um, as soon as the reviews of these go live. So I'm just going to leave it there and say, well, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Cheers for now.